spelled in the UKW. But each one of those letters has significance. D stood for the year of design, which was 1942. The U stands for utilitarian amphibious vehicle. The K stands for front wheel drive. And the W stands for rear wheel drive. And between 1943 and 1945, they built over 21,000 of these ducks for World War II. They built them in Pontiac, Michigan, and St. Louis, Missouri. Of course, way back then, they had a little six-tone race in here. But today, guys, today we got a 427 Chevy V8. That's not a console reality. Captain Candy likes it. I'm, being, I'm on camera twice right now. She's getting me there. But this one up here is getting everybody from this direction. So if you're getting my face, I'm getting my head over back. I think that one's getting the good side. We have left the Fall Creek Valley area. We're going into what's known as the White River Valley area. And the White River starts in northwestern Arkansas. And it flows into Beaver Lake. Beaver Lake is flows into about seven miles from the gallon out here. In the water, though, it's much different. In the water, we get two miles from the gallon. Now, if you can see that big building way up there in front of us with the green roof on it, that is Chateau on the lake. That's a great resort, hotel, and there's our cat on the pricey side. We're talking like New York City kind of prices here. They put a chocolate on yourself last night. Oh, yeah. We're talking about a good chocolate here. Towels, the towels are so flush. Captain Candy told me that the last time his wife and uh, he and his wife stayed there, that they couldn't even get the suitcase closed when they checked out. That's how flush those towels are. Yes. <laughs> what are we going left here? We're going left. Here. I guess we always go left here. Don't we? we need to borrow the scarf. But if we had gone left here, if we didn't go left here, we went straight for about six miles. Out to Silver Dollar City. How many people rode that new roller coaster out there? The Time Traveler. I've done it. Oh my gosh. You rode the Time Traveler? Oh my gosh. I've done it. You couldn't pay me to ride that thing. No way. Was it fun? Did you keep your eyes? Did you keep your eyes open? I'm gonna go in the water. Yeah. I I, did you keep your eyes open? Baird Mountain. B-A-I-R-D. Baird Mountain. The only way to come up here is on a duck. 
And uh, we got a lot of branches and limbs that are getting off a close to the side in. of the desk. So everybody make sure they listen. Yes, he's shivered in frozen winter forests and braved unforgiving mountains rising dark against unfamiliar skies. We were far from home, sometimes hungry, often homesick, and always on edge, knowing that our final moments on Earth might be only a heartbeat away. Yet, even when the artillery thundered down on us and the enemy's bullets rained like deadly hailstones, we always felt connected to our families and friends back home, and we never felt alone. That's because we knew our military vehicles were made by people who deeply cared about us. They were ordinary folks who had made an extraordinary commitment to do everything they could to keep us safe, even as we rode into the valley of the beast. We put our trust in those people back home, and they poured all of their skill and devotion into every bearing every flange and every ribbon of every vehicle that rolled off those assembly lines. Because of them, we always knew that we could count on our vehicles to be up to the task, to perform under fire, just as they were designed to do. In fact, we staked our lives on them. And so, for every rosy riveter or roll for welder on the home front, there was a grateful soldier on the front lines. The names of those vehicles were often names like M59 and even the Gamma Goat. But in our moments of greatest need, on the crater battlefields of the Italian front, on the deadly beaches of Normandy and Guadalcanal, through the sniper-infested rice paddies of Korea and Vietnam, they were our chariots, our steeds, our shields, and our swords. You know well the name of some of the manufacturers. Chevrolet, International Harvester, Pontiac, Studebaker, Cadillac. Others may not be so familiar. Consolidated Diesel Electric Company, Pacific Car and Foundry. Their fighting machines had one thing in common. They were all made in America, infused with American pride and honor and designed with one overpowering purpose in mind to help our brave fighting forces defend America's freedom and liberty against some of the greatest threats of the last century. The vehicles came in every shape, size, though they were mostly the same color, often form followed function with the purpose of the vehicle revealed in its design. Some had tires, some had treads, and some came equipped with marine propellers. Some were amphibious, able to move troops and supplies from ship to shore and back again. Others were designed to respond to crashes of fires or to rush to the scene to repair damaged tanks or to rescue injured soldiers. There were vehicles designed to tow other vehicles, while others were designed to be towed as trailers. Some were specific with ease. Some were created to help attack the vital supplies, while still others transported the troops themselves. Some were armed, and many were armored. Those fighting machines of yesteryear served us well, and because of them, many of us survived to sing their praises. Today, nearly all of those military vehicles are long retired. Most have gone on to the scrapper hold a special place in our memories. Alrighty guys, hope you enjoyed our tribute to Prince Bell way out there to your left. Let's see it again. Once we get up to the top of the mountain, we'll have some nice views up there and we'll take some pictures of the table rock way. Now you're only seeing a small portion of that lake because that lake is about 44,000 acres in size. It's got over 750 miles of shoreline to it. And we're about 1,350 feet above sea level right here. All those big birds you see flying out there, guys, they painted it green, make it look a little military again. We just use it for a display.
90s. At that point in time, they started modifying the fleet ducts, cut them in half to make them a little bit longer to accommodate another seat. They did away with the sun deck on the back where passengers sat in chairs. They put V8 engines and automatic transmissions in them, and fleet ducts evolved into what we are riding in today, what we call a stretch duct, because it has literally been stretched out some. And that duck over there, guys, that was Ride the Duck's very first duck in 1977. Oh, what was that? Fleet duck number one. Will not story. tell us anything about tomorrow, though. The main thing uh, we want to find out is the rock still there. The rock still there. With no tornado. Look, there's a fork in the road. That's so we don't get lost. They told us find the fork in the road. I'll show you the end of the video. And if they didn't like that, they're really not going to like Bigfoot over here to your left. Yeah. Look, we found Bigfoot. Yeah, Bigfoot over there. They said he's not real. I think he might be. We also have black bears around here. In fact, I read recently the black bear population is close to 400 in, in Missouri right now. And Are you ready, Guys, Shane? we have two different ways we can go in the water. We can go in the water like a little bitty duck. We can go in the water like a great big duck. What you want to do today? Big duck. Big duck. Big duck. All right. I would expect nothing less from the crowd we got today. No. Yeah. Come on. But I do know one thing. If we're going to go in the water like a big duck, I got to do something very important. Keep your head in, Shane. Close that windshield. Yes. Oh my gosh, Captain Candy. I want to close this down. That water looks no. extremely wet today. The water looks wet today. Wet roll. Well, we're going anyways. And if we're going to go in the water like a big duck. Shane, hold on to the seat in front of you. We need big duck music, so hold on to the little people. You hold on to the seat, Shane. There you go. Table Rock Lake. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Do not try that at home. Do not try that at home. That was it, guys. Yeah, don't try it with your car. Hey, you guys want to do that again? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what you got to do, come back here and meet Captain Cammy and I tomorrow at the same time, same location. All right. Let's get a move on out here. I had my face covered, so I don't know what happened. Okay, it was fire at my Oh wait, we didn't quack! Now we got uh, we got enough people back there. I think I can go ahead and take a break. So what I do is I slide over here on the brake seat, but I'm required to have an assistant up with me at all times. So I'm looking for raise your hands, raise your hands. Right no! Just wait. We'll get everybody up here and watch the drive. How about over here? How about the birthday boy? We didn't have to pay attention when we were getting up in front. Sure. Come on up here. You can show them how it's done. Yeah. Now the showboat Brant Spell will dock right back over there to your right when it returns from its cruise. Has anybody been out in the bell before? Nobody's done the bell before. You guys have done the bell right? but uh, I always recommend it to people if they have enough time while they're in the area. It's a lot of fun. Did you change your mind? Not yet? What's your older brother's name? What? Sawyer. Tom, come on up here. You ready, Tom? I mean, Sawyer. All right, come on up here. Give me five seconds. Now, what's your name? Shannon. Shannon. Shannon with an S. H. Shannon, how old are you? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. 
And do uh, you know Shannon? Oh yeah. Okay. I'm Shannon. You're you're what? I'm Shannon. I'm no, his mom. He's, he's Shannon. Yes. I'm you're Shannon. Sh- she's Shannon. Well, you're kind of confusing me here. Exactly. All I want to know is where are you going right now? He's not paying attention, is he? Do you realize what you're doing right now? You're doing a donut. Yes, I do realize. You do realize that? Yes. Shannon and Shannon. Yes. All right. Yeah. Who else you got in your family back there wants to drive? We got Rethan. Who's that? Rethan. Rethan? Shannon, Shannon, Sherry. And Rethan wants to drive. Well, give me five. We'll get the next one up here. Send send somebody up here. I don't know how to pronounce all these names. Watch your leg. Like now, what's your name? Reetha. Reetha? Yes. Who named these people? You did, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Reetha, how old are you? I'm almost 10. I'm almost 10. Almost 10. Now, where do you live? Do I have to go in the we're, we're circling here. Now, where do you live? Where do you live? I uh, live in Missouri. Why do you live in Missouri? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. And I know we're in no. Missouri right now, but I don't know where I live. Jeez, you got like stuff everywhere you're taking. I mean, holy cow. You talk about, <laughs> you talk about multitasking. I have to with these two. Now, who's next in your group? That's all. That's it. All right, give me five, dude. Watch yourself coming down here. 